In this video, we're going to talk about civil Acadraw civil rules dealing with horizontal geometry. Civil rules are basically constraints on how that particular item was placed, depending on if you use civil Acadraw whenever you come in here and use your horizontal geometry tools or some of your other tools in your civil tools. And to demonstrate that, I'm going to use the point method in my horizontal geometry as my first example. So I'll come in here and do my point, and the feature definition that I'm going to set, I'm going to go ahead and use this one right here that says right away survey marker. I could use some other point feature which basically puts a cell into the file depending on what point feature that I have. But whenever I place that point feature, that allows the civil tools to recognize that and use it for other tools in my civil tools. If I just come out here and place a simple microstation cell, you can place that particular cell there, but in my civil tool it will not recognize that and you may not be able to use it for future aspects in your civil design. So it just kind of depends on what you're wanting to place in the file, whether you want it to be a horizontal geometry civil feature or if you want it just to be a, just a simple microstation cell that's being placed out there like for your traffic control cells and some other cells or lines that are out there. So to demonstrate this I'm going to use my point feature of right away survey marker and I'm going to use civil Acadraw which I have it toggled on and I'm going to use the station and offset option. First thing that I'm going to do is hit the letter O so I can select a reference element to base this off of. And I'm going to use this line as my element that I'm going to use as my reference element. So I'll go ahead and select it. And as I move my cursor around, you'll see the stationing go up. And also my offset, depending on which side of the road or the line that I have out there. So I'm just going to input some values to demonstrate how this is going to work. I'm going to use 2 plus 50. I'll lock that value in by hitting the enter key and I'll do an offset of 120 and you'll see if I move my mouse around it's locked to that position and if I want to place it of course you'd left click to accept it and I'll do the same thing over here I'll do 5 plus 0, 0 lock that value in and do it as an offset of 100 left click to place it and I'll place another one up here 7 plus 50 and I'll do a 150 foot offset place it and of course whenever I'm finished with the tool I'll right click to reset it and I'm finished now since I place those items out there if I come out here and I left click on one of those cells or points that I placed if you hover over top of it it'll even say that it's a point and what the point is which is a right away location survey marker that is that point feature if I click on it you'll notice that there are some rules assigned to it civil rules because that's what you told it whenever you placed that particular point you told it that you want to go 120 foot off of that line or that reference element at a station of 2 plus 50 now if I want to come in here and change that dynamically I could do that if I come in here and click on one of these values like 2 plus 50 let's say I want to change that to 3 plus 50 Simply come in there, type that in, hit the enter key to accept that value, and that point's going to move accordingly. Same thing for my offset. If I click on that offset value, maybe it's a negative 130, enter to lock it in, and that point will move. So that's what those values are right here. Those are civil rules that are assigned to that particular point feature because that's what you told it whenever it was placed. Now if I placed it with some other feature, maybe like distance and direction, it would do the same thing. So I'll use my distance and direction. I'll place that point out there again. I'll hit the letter O as my reference so I can select a reference point. And I'm just going to use the end of this line as the example here. So I'll go ahead and snap to it. And I'll go ahead and give it a distance of 550 and I'll do an angle of north 50 degrees east something short and simple lock those two values in left click to place it and I'll right click to reset it and I'm finished 
So on this one here, I use the station and offset option for my civil Acadraw tools. But on this one here, I place this one using the distance and direction. So my civil rules are a little bit different this time. I can still manipulate those by coming in here into that field and changing them. And it will change accordingly. So that's what civil rules are. Now if I move this line, since it is ruled to that line or that reference element that I identified, if I come in here and move it, those points should go with it. And I'm going to come out here and just left click to drop it off. And all those cells will go with it. Just like what I'm doing right now. Because it is ruled to that reference element. Like if I click on here, you'll see that's ruled this way. If I click on this one, you'll see that it's the rule is snapped to this endpoint to the distance and direction that I defined. Now, there are ways to break that rule. If you hover over that point and you go to your, to your properties, you can come in here and you can change these values accordingly if you need to do that. Or, if you come in here and select it, with any civil object or any civil line or point that's out there, these little dots right here, this is what Bentley calls manipulators for that particular horizontal geometry that's placed. And for this one here, it's a point. So if I come in here and I select that manipulator, which will say move point, and I select it, I can come out here and move that point. But whenever you move that point doing that, it actually breaks the civil rules that are assigned to it. So basically you're moving it to some other location, then it breaks that rule. This one here hasn't been moved yet, so it's still going to have those rules assigned to it. So if you move it using that manipulator, it's going to break that rule that was previously defined. Just a couple things to think about if you move something or if you place something using civil Acadraw and also your horizontal geometry tools. Another example where several rules will come into effect, and there's going to be many of these that you'll use your civil Acadraw along with your horizontal, horizontal geometry options, but another one would be like placing the line between points. Let's say we're coming out here, and let's, let's say this is your center line of road as the example, and I'm going to come in here and use the feature definition. I'm going to use the feature definition under drafting standards, right away, parcels, new right away controlled access line. This one here, I'm just going to use my station and offset option again. And I'm just going to go in here and just place some lines in here, maybe a line going this way, straight across, and coming back down to do stationing offset off that example center line that I have out here. I'm going to do 1 plus 0, 0 and do an offset of 120. Start it there. And I'll go up. 4 plus 50. Enter. 200 as the offset. Do that. I'll go ahead and snap to that point there. To do the next one, I'll do 6 plus 50. Enter. 200. Enter for the offset. And then I'll go back from that point, snap to it, and then I'll do an offset of 10 plus 0, 0. Enter to lock that in and do an offset of 75. So basically I tied all these together to this reference element that I have out here. Now if you want these, if I come out here and select this line that I placed using my horizontal geometry tools, you'll see that it has rules assigned to it. Because that's what I told it whenever I use that station to offset tool and I'm basing it off this center line that I have out there. If I select this one, it does the same thing for this right here, but whenever I place that line, I snap to this previously placed line. So my rule on this one here is actually the key point of that end of that line because, that, because that's what I told it. And the same thing for this one right here. I could have done it a little bit differently. I could have actually inputted those values to lock those in where it'd be ruled to the center line, but I just snapped to the end of them. So a couple of different methodologies on that. 
Now, if I wanted to, I could complex those elements to make those kind of one line string instead of those being separate. And to do that, there's an option here that says complex by elements. And I'm going to set that feature definition to the same thing. That way, whenever it all comes together, it's still a new right away controlled access line. And I'll go ahead and select the first one. And there's, there's a couple different options here. We can do manual or automatic. For this example, I'm going to do manual, but if you got a long line string and you want those all tied together, it may be beneficial to do automatic, but it just kind of depends on what situation that you got. So I'll do manual. I'm going to select the first one, but it does matter which side that you select it on, because if you, if you move your mouse to the left or the right, you'll see those arrows. Basically identifying what direction you want that complex shape or that complex element to create. I want it to go in that direction so I have my arrow set correct. I'll left click on the first one. I'll come out here and do the second one. Make sure my arrow is still going in that same direction. And I'll do this last one right here. And then once I'm finished with it, I'll just left click out on the blank screen. And we have that right away line placed out there using our horizontal geometry civil tools. If I come out here and I use my element selection tool, you'll see that it's ruled to that particular center line that I have defined out there. So if I move this center line or modify this center line in any fashion, that center line will go with it. Just like what we did right there. So I move it up, it's going to go with it. Or if I need to change these, I can come in and I can come in here and change these values. Maybe instead of being 1 plus 0 0, I need to be 0 plus 50. Enter to lock it in. It's going to change accordingly. Depending on which one that you change, will identify will tell it if it's still ruled to this item or not. So if I change these values, of course they'll still be locked to this center line. But if I change these values, it will actually break that rule because it can't use the same stationing and offset if you change these values and they're still locked in. And an example of that is, let's say I come in here and I just change this to um, 450. Lock that in. You'll see that since I had it created from here, it goes up in that direction, but this value now is no longer valid because I changed the length of that line. So it actually broke that rule. If I need to bring it back, simply do a microstation undo and it'll bring it back. Those are just civil rules that are that are applied whenever you use your horizontal geometry tools over to the side here in your civil toolbar. Now you can still use civil AccuDraw down below here with standard microstation tools. Let's say I come out here and I'm going to delete this item and I'll just leave my attributes set to what this is up here. If I need to change it to the correct attributes I can do that using the horizontal geometry feature definition or going through my task going to MoDOT Design, CAD Standards, go to Geometry and going to whatever type that I need to go to. Maybe this time I'll just use Property Line. And of course it sets up the attributes for that. Now if I come in here and do the same thing, let's say I come in here and do, I do 0 plus 50, lock that value in, I'll do 120, left click to accept it, and I'll just draw one line this time and do a station of 8 plus 75 and an offset of 50. Left click to accept it, right click to end it. It still works, the civil AccuDraw, but it's not ruled to this line because it using the standard microstation tools, it knows how to use civil AccuDraw, but it doesn't tie it together and place it as a rule. So if I come in here and I move this line, this line here stays stagnant. If I select it, you'll see that there's no rules assigned to it accordingly. Same thing if I place a cell in using my standard microstation CAD standard tools, it wouldn't be ruled to it. I still use that station offset, direction, direction, offset, offset, whatever civil accurate option that I want, it just won't be civil ruled to that particular element. So couple different methodologies on that. If you hear the terminology of civil rules, that's what that's called.